Well, hi all. Hope you all had a good week. Uh, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Well, it will be Wednesday by the time you see this, anyway. Um, tonight I'm going to be quickly uh, taking up my uh, my stout I made it two weeks ago. Um, it's been fermenting about ten days at about three days at eighteen degrees. Um, now they've ramped it up to about 22 degrees over about three or four days uh, and I bought it in and just left it in the house to it's been sat around like 18 degrees for about the last three or four days and um, I'm not going to bother uh, crash chilling or anything because um, there's no dry hops or anything there so I suppose everybody's got their own little regime for uh, filling cordy kegs and uh, sterilizing and stuff like that so I'm just going to quickly show you what I do I think it's just a an accumulation of what I've seen online and um, uh, what I've decided to do myself anyway normally uh, when a corny keg comes out of the um, out of the fridge I then we fill it up with hot water give it a good rinse around and uh, just rinse out all the whole, rinse, rinse all the collectors out of the hot water and then uh, every now and again I'll fill it up with some sodium percarbonate where is it? so there we are, that's the sodium percarbonate I use um, that's the malt mill I think uh, but I Toss about two or three tablespoons of that in there, chuck some more warm water in there, give it a good shake up. And I might even stick a bit of pressure on there, leave that for a few, leave it about an hour. And I empty that out, out again, then uh, give it a rinse out, and then I fill it with um, about three or four litres of star sand, obviously in diluted in water. I carve it up and uh, obviously clean all the top off with soap and all that. and. Uh, sterilize it and leave it until I need it. So now at the stage where this has got star sand in it, just excuse all the heaters and boilers or wash machines going off here. Um, but anyway what I've done now I've got my star sand in here. Uh, I've got my uh, obviously I've got my my beer ready to go into the keg. I've got my auto and stuff like that. So what I will do, what I did find a few years ago, what you will find if you use um, uh, the auto siphons is that you might get a bit of chip actually accumulating down here. Well, I didn't, right. Anyway. But what I, what I did, I actually just filled it up with uh, oil of sodium carbonate and uh, left it about an hour or so. And it cleans it all up, which is quite cool. Um, I've seen some people having problems with these things breaking but I've, I've looked out to it so far and it's it's been quite good it hasn't broken so far so yeah so what do I do next so obviously because I've got my star sound set it sat out my keg I'm just going to dump it out straight into a bucket obviously let the air out for this I do, I just top, toss that space in the bucket. Uh, there we go. So it's all sterilised now. Sometimes I just get a bit of um, a J cloth, just toss it over the top. Um, so at, at this stage, this, this cake here has maybe got a little bit of CO2 in there already it's like obviously carved it up um, it mixes around with the air and all that anyway but you can say there's just a little bit in there so that's a good thing so I don't uh, <coughs> there's no chance of perhaps getting too much carbonation going on so uh, next thing I do is just start dipping my I do I dip this in here first And then I can actually slide it in here quite easily. Sometimes it's a bit stiff, but uh, there we are. So once it's got a bit of star sand in there, it actually gets a bit. So it all gets looped up then. Then attach my hose. 
But actually, now what we do is just soak this hose in a bit of the uh, soak the hose in here first. I don't really need to have all the hose soaked. So I just need the bottom part in there. So if you can't see this, by just basically dipping it straight into the bucket here. And I'm just actually just covering the outside of the. I don't really bother about getting a liquid inside of the the pipe. I'll just get it on the outside. So when the when the pipe goes into the corny keg, uh, the whole pipe what's on the outside is nice and clean. And then once I've done, I've soaked the outside in a bit of star sand, I will just pop the tube onto the water siphon. Just pump it, and that will just obviously circulate the star sand around from the bottom of the from the bottom of the of the water siphon through the pipe and it's all sterilised and it's obviously going, all the star sounds going exactly where the beer is going to be going. Okay so next let's just do, oh better not forget, I've got this little bungee here which goes on the bottom as well, chuck that in there. So let's have a look, um, what <coughs> I like to do and I've seen other people do it is just to get get something and actually push it under the front of the um, of the keg. Obviously it puts that at a right angle so that a lot of liquid flows out the other side so you get, get all the liquid that you can get out. Um, and also, I'll, <coughs> I'll get a little glass so I can have a quick taste of the beer as it comes out. Always wet your glass. Just a force, just a, just, just a habit, really, isn't it? But um, so I've got my my beer ready, to, my beer glass ready to have a quick taste. I've got my corny keg ready. I'll just empty out any more star sandwich might be hanging around in there. Um, one thing to note: I haven't really got much foam in here. Uh, I think. Um, I just don't like having too much foam because when I'm filling the beer up I can't actually see how high it is. In this case I've got uh, I've got 10 litres in here so it's not really going to be a big issue. It might actually be about 12 litres in there. <coughs> but I've got that much beer in there so it's only going to come up to maybe about, about here on the keg. So we're only going to get half a keg today. But um, when I do a 19 kilo one I like to see where the top is, so I don't fill it up above the level of the um, the gas pipe. So if you look in there, you can see there's no, it just protrudes back about maybe an inch down there. When you fill it up with beer, you just don't want it to go above that, or you get all sorts of problems going on. Things like you get, when you try to carbonate your beer, and if you, I mean, the first you, you only do it a few times and you don't do it again, but what you can find is that you can get um, you get beer being, being forced up inside your gas pipe into your, into your um, regulator and that's some place you don't want to go. I've, I've had it come back and I've had to insert that a few times, but um, um, once you've been doing it for a while, you don't do it anymore because it's a pain in the bottom. I have considered getting a uh, anti-return valves but I think they're more for I don't know I think they're more for liquid so, so I don't know how it would actually work in combination with liquid and gas because obviously I think the anti-reverse valves they're more there for just keeping one one type of substance going in one direction so either gas or liquid but I might be wrong, as ever. Right, so we're all ready to go. We've got the top of the keg there, all carved, all, all uh, in the uh, sarsan. All the pipe of the uh, auto siphon is. <coughs> I'll show that to you. It's all in there. It's got lots of lots of sterilizer in there. I sterilized the pipe. Um, Let's just get the keg open here open and have a look. Hopefully it's not got any <coughs> 
excuse me, green goo floating on top, but I doubt it hasn't. I haven't actually, uh, since I popped it in here two weeks ago, well, about two weeks, ten days ago, I haven't actually looked at it at all, so. Um, one thing I haven't done is take a sample, a, uh, a final gravity, but Uh, maybe I better do that. Hang on a second. So I'm back. I've got my. Uh, oh, shit. I've got my um, trial jar. Been sterilised. Don't really need to do it. Anyway. I'm just going to drink that beer. I've got my uh, turkey baster thing, which needs to be sterilised. Give that bit of a rinse around in that. that on and we'll just take a few drops of this beer out and just do a I take a high drop of that ball. I'm good old trusty um SO4 seems to have attenuated really well here. Right, it's attenuated really well actually. Right, let's have a look. So I'm looking at, oh, 10 something. Let's have a quick peek. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's got it's just a little bit below the black line, which is it just means it's about ten ten. Uh, it may even be a bit above the line. I think it's about ten eleven. That's worked really well. That's uh, not what to expect. Um, I think I mashed it about sixty six degrees. See the colour's quite good. Nice ruby red. Um, it's not too black. Got faint, a faint smell of chocolate on there. We'll have a proper taste in a minute anyway. Let's get this beer into the cake and uh, get it all done with. Okay, so I'll just pour the water all over the place. Sometimes you might have a little bit of uh, star sand above the uh, thing. I mean, some people um, do that intentionally so they can get, so if any air does bubble in there, it only gets in the, um, you know, get star sand in your, in your beer, which is okay, but I just, well, uh, I just trust that if there's a little bit of air in there, it's just gonna get in. Right, let's just get back in. I push this right to the far ed far corner until I touch the edge, and then I just slide it down until it finds the far, far, far corner. Uh, and just hook it on. And up we go. Okay, so while this is uh, doing its business, let's have a smell. I'm getting, uh, definitely getting a lot of chocolate flavour in there. Obviously it's uh, early days with the carbonation, but it's a very uh, light, a light, uh, light stout. Um, there ever will be a stout, I think it's going to be a dark beer again, isn't it? But let's have a quick taste. Okay, so I've got quite a lot of, um, Bit of bar do there, nice caramelly feel to it. The bitterness is it's there, but it's not majorly bitter. I think it's bitter enough though. Bitter to the level that it's actually balanced. But I actually use my own um, challenger hops in this, so yeah. 
I think that's about right. That's a good, good for the style, really. <laughs> okay, so this, I think um, we'll just let it. <coughs> I'll carb it up for a few days now, and we'll have a taste of it after that. Ooh. It tastes very nice, anyway. Um, quite unusual. I don't know what's. It's quite unusual, unusual flavours there. So we're almost down to the last bit of. Oh, there we are. So that's all the. Uh, all that finished. Obviously, a point to make is to always. Always make sure that. Uh, right, let's let this all go in there. Okay, so once I've done that, I pop the let's see, pop the end back in here, so it doesn't drip everywhere, and make a big mess, and I haven't got the missing shaft on me because it's a little sticky. Uh, and uh, there we are. Right, so uh, next thing I do <coughs> is to just obviously slip this back on. Hopefully, you can see that, and. Um, I'll take this to the keg. To, what I'll do now, I'll take it to my, um, my fermentation fridge, which hopefully you've all seen already. But it's a big white fridge. Put the handful on it. Um, anyway, I put the pop in there. I uh, shove gas onto the, the gas inside, which is normally indicated by a um, special little kink in the, uh, in the, in the valve. <laughs> And also, this has got in somewhere, but <coughs> it's a bit tricky to read. What you could do on these is to get a paint pen and actually stick a paint pen around the um, around the hole if you if you keep forgetting it all the time. Um, but anyway, put the gas on there, and then I'll just pull this little valve up a few times to purge any uh, oxygen. Obviously, obviously, but there's quite might be quite a lot of oxygen in in here. Um, I don't try to purge all at once, I just purge a bit, let the CO2 float around a bit and then eventually settle on top and then purge a bit more every now and again. And what you'll find is that the uh, the beer will actually still be fermenting a little bit anyway, because it's obviously a live beer. And it'll build this, it'll start obviously carry on creating its own little CO2 level on top. And also you'll have your CO2 that you stick in which will maybe float down but you can't but the thing is when people purge it you're you, you, you're of the opinion that you're putting co2 in and it's pushing the oxygen to the top but that, that's not the case i think uh, it's something that um paul paul wickstein would have said a, said a few years ago when i was watching one of his videos he said co2 just mixes with, with air it's all mixed together anyway so if you think the longer you keep purging, the more oxygen you're going to get out, it's not going to happen. So, yeah, in my mind, it's a total waste of time to keep trying to purge it. Just purge it enough to actually get it so perhaps you've got a good enough layer over the top. Just accept there's going to be air in there and, uh, and carry on and enjoy your beer. I mean, you just can't do it perfectly unless you fill the beer right, I mean if you fill the beer right to the top and it's right level there, you stand a chance to actually perhaps, perhaps purge all the CO2, but uh, any any undulations or any, any type of movement that you, you put on the keg, it's going to mix all that, all, all the oxygen and CO2 and the nitrogen, it's supposed like all nitrogen, isn't it, together, and yeah. Right, um, let me put this keg away and I'll come back to you for the rest of this homebrew Wednesday talk you Anyway, I'm back again. Um, let's just grab a beer out of the fridge. Ah, oh, look. I've got some Elvis juice. It's got grapefruit in it. I think it's an IPA or something. At 6.5%, so it must be uh, 
um, quite strong. But let's, let's have a quick taste of that. And we'll tell you what's been going on. Oh. Anyway, cheers all. Oh, water. Um, well, I had a boo day this weekend again. Uh, I didn't show any of it. I might show it. Uh, we'll, we'll show a clip of the um, of my mashing because I this weekend I got my um, my bag, my ball in the bag bag, which has got a hole in the bottom, so I can slip it over my um, my grandfather. And I use that to uh, prevent any grain getting into the uh, into the into the boil, and it did a perfect job. Completely clear, no grain at all. The only bit of grain I think I've got in there was grain that perhaps like snuck down the hole as I was filling it or down the side. But apart from that, um, cheers! Wow, it tastes the yeah. <coughs> Great through that one. Um, apart from that, it came out crystal clear, and I've been very, very happy with it actually. Um, some things which I did notice though is that I mean, I made a kind of golden ale with my uh, my um, my challenger hops. But one thing I did notice was that the um, that it's. Um, Obviously, because the the mesh was quite fine, is that uh, it obviously drained much lower. I suppose that's the uh, compromise you've got to make, really, with with a finer filter. <laughs> but and I, I expect if my grain was actually ground a bit not so fine, it would actually go quite slow anyway. So uh, that's what might happen. Um, I've had a quick chat to a guy in Bristol called the Brew Builder. Um, it's called Mark Lewazevich, excuse me if I spelt his name wrong, <coughs> and he's actually got a great father and he's going to be looking at the, uh, bot he's look looking at the, uh, these issues, he's going to perhaps do some, build, sell, start selling some modifications for the, um, the great father, I think things like different uh, false bottoms and stuff like that, and perhaps even more stuff, I don't know, see what he comes up with, but anyway, um, and another thing I found is when I was uh, finished my boil off and actually sucking all the um, all the all the liquid out into the fermenter, which is in the fridge at the moment, um, I found that it um, because there was no particles of the of the grain actually blocking up the hole, and there were some hops around it, but it sucked. All the proteins all, all into the fermenter, which I don't know. I've seen other people doing it, and it obviously still still settles out quite well. So it didn't stay in the bottom of the fermenter. But yeah, I wasn't so sure about that. But on the other hand, I think it's 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 a little bit of a compromise. Mm. Well, I had some of this in the summer. I can't remember the grapefruit being so. Powerful and overwhelming. It, it says actually, I don't know. It just takes it. You can just obviously just perceive the hops at the back end there. Um, but anyway, uh, that was that. Um, I had a, a home brewers meet last week, but I was too busy. I got <coughs> I got one of my older daughters who's going to go to college, and I had to do a parents' evening where. Um, she strategically picked every single teacher who she wanted to see so that uh, she doesn't have that surprise teacher who turns around and says, so when are you going to hand your homework in and stuff like that. So I didn't have those surprises. The old teacher seems she's doing well and well, as a barbie you're quite happy and it's going really well. I took her to a, uh, and after doing the parents evening I had to go to the, go to another open evening at the college and uh, so I walked around the college, looked at computers and stuff like that, which wants to do IT and a bit of science and maths and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. 
So that was my last Thursday taken up and I was nothing beer related at all. It was a bit sad, but on the other hand, I just felt as if I've been drinking a little bit too much lately. Um, I am though going to have a brewery trip, not this weekend, but the weekend afterwards. Let's have a look around having a brewery trip. Oh, I think it's it's somewhere in the in the med. So I'll uh, up there. There's some. I'm popping down in Bolton to see a friend next week. So uh, for weeks so I'm going to quickly jump on the jet, pop down there, and stay there for weeks. So lots of it's an old beer drinking friend. So we're going to have lots of beers and. Uh, I've just booked up a little little trip to a brewery down there, which is a kind of crap brewery, which seems to be doing lots of beer styles. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and I may even give you a, a nice little relaxing, sunny, home, home brew Sunday, home, home brew Wednesday to um, to brighten all brighten all the gloomy days up here in the UK. So it's been. It's really get it's gonna the the clocks go back this Saturday and it's just gonna be dark and dreary and oh anyway coming back to the beer um a beer we made at weekend sort of bait um gonna keg that up into a it's just gonna be a set of golden it's gonna be kegged up and it's gonna be popped in the fridge uh, maybe next Tuesday. Um I've got to wash all this out here, we're going to carb it up and perhaps have a little tasting, uh, I don't know, maybe towards the end of the weekend once it's all carved up. I put it on forced carb now so it's on about 30, 30 psi and I'll top it to 30 psi for about 2 or 3 days and then I'll just turn it down to about 10 psi is where I normally carb my beer up, my leave, normally have my main carbonation level. Um, Next Monday is my home brewers meet the Bristol, the Baba, Baba, home brew meet of group, the Bristol and Bath brewers, I think. A Bristol Amateur Brewers meet up, that's in the city centre, so I'll most likely take my, my stout along, that's what people think of it. And I've got my experimental beers that I think I'll take along as well. Hopefully they have all carbonated up now. A little bit sweet the other week, as you might have seen. Um, um, beer more beer mail has been sent out. I think uh, I sent some out to uh, uh, Brewmaster Ben. Hopefully I'll see some bit of, bit of feedback. But it's going to sit in the fridge a few weeks by the sound of it. I think he's a busy man. He's got... Uh, I thought I had too many kids, but I think he's got four kids, so he's uh, very busy. I think he maybe he maybe some twins now as well. Might be wrong. I've got to finish, do my, I've got my last beer. My, what is it? A pale Session Ale. It's very misty. That's my SJ Paul one. That's got to be done. I can do that now straight away. It's got to be, I'll get, get scores in for Friday. SJ Paul this year, uh, it's been really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, maybe, I don't know, we're maybe slightly dull perhaps because nobody's really been um, into the lower ABV beers. I, I know maybe some people have actually taken a year off or some people haven't done it at all because, just because of that or, or felt it's like a good time not to do it. Um, I think generally the beers have been good. We had one or two which have been Maybe just just not come out right. I mean, I made my beer and I just whacked it together. And I didn't do any testing or experimenting with it, which maybe I should have done. I think next year I will uh, do a lot more prep and and the same thing for the beer I did for the National Homebrew Competition. Do more prep and get it right. Uh, at least do one brew and for, and um, and go from there. Um, and that's it. Right, bye all guys and ladies, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, uh, comment, and I'll, I'll see you all next week in, in sunnier climes. I'll be relaxing in the meadow, you say. Bye guys. Cheers. So here we go, um, obviously it's only a small, small mash today. But as you can see, 
by putting that in there um, it has stopped all the grain which is quite good I've been chatting to uh, Guy the uh, the grain the uh, brew builder in Bristol and he said he's actually got one of these as well and he's actually going to be cloning he's going to be looking at the base of this and perhaps doing some sort of modification that you'll be able to buy which will actually enable the uh, filters to work a bit more efficiently but um, I'm going to class this as a success today I have not so have not seen one bit of grain going through yet nothing being pumped through anything so um, yeah I'm very happy with that. Anyway, I'll see you all soon, or maybe on Wednesday, and uh, have a good weekend, you all. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and leave in the comments. Bye-bye.